Black Tech every week, and in this video I'm going to be giving my WWDC 2012 recap. I know WWDC was, I believe it was Tuesday, June 12th, uh, so that was three days ago. Um, I'm getting this up a little bit late, uh, but I am going to get it up now, uh, and I figured better late than never. But but first of all, I do want to see if you want to watch the, uh, the actual keynote itself. Just go to the Apple homepage. And uh, you can see it right here. You can just hit watch the keynote. I'll also put the direct link um, for the keynote in the description in case they change the homepage up a little bit. Um, uh, but if you want to watch the actual keynote itself, it's uh, right on the homepage there. Uh, of course, the keynote started off with um, Tim Cook starting and talking about all the milestones of all the apps and stuff uh, that were downloaded and the amount of apps and apps store and all that kind of stuff. Um, like every other keynote they have at WWDC. Uh, but first, actual once they get into the keynote, the first thing they actually talked about uh, were the uh, the new Macs. So let's go ahead and head over here. And actually started off with the uh, the MacBook Air. Uh, first of all, I do want to say they dropped the price a hundred bucks. Um, so it starts at a thousand now rather than eleven hundred. Um, I believe it started at eleven hundred before. Um, but basically, they did all the normal upgrades they do every year. Uh, there's not too much new stuff. They just got the fastest. They got the uh, the latest processors now. Uh, I believe it's Ivy Bridge. Uh, it, they have more capability for RAM now. I think they can have up to eight gigabytes in RAM. And I don't, I don't want to go through all the specs and stuff. Otherwise, this video is gonna get extremely long. I guess I'll go through some of them. But basically, if you guys are interested in any of these products, go ahead and just go to the Apple uh, site over here and uh, check them out for yourself. Because uh, I don't want to go through all the specs, otherwise this video is going to get extremely boring, and it's just going to take forever to get through. Um, but they have all the basic upgrades for this, uh, fast processors, faster graphics, they have USB 3.0 now, a 720p FaceTime camera, um, just like the MacBook Pro. Uh, but I don't want to go through all of it, let's go to uh, the MacBook Pro now that they upgraded. As you can see already, um, the MacBook Pro they upgraded uh, with the right of display. Now, it's not all MacBook Pros. Uh, this is like another line to the, the, the notebook lineup. Uh, so they have the MacBook Air, they have the MacBook Pro, and now they got the MacBook Pro with the Retina display. And this is pretty much like their supercomputer they've, they've been calling or something like that. I can't remember exactly what Tim Cook used. Um, or whoever started off, I can't remember. But uh, uh, but basically this is, it's got flash storage like the Air, so it's extremely fast. It's got fast processors. It's got already, it comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM. It's got the Retina display. It's got faster graphics and all that. It's just completely upgraded. Um, it has USB 3.0. It has an, it's the first uh, Mac computer with an HDMI cable, or at least the MacBooks um, with an HDMI port on it. Uh, it has two Thunderbolt ports. It's got a USB 3.0 port um, with uh, 2.0 built in. And they've actually advanced the technology in the notebook, like the unibody of it. Uh, you can see there's like three slits here in it, uh, and the air like the air goes through that. And I'm not sure if it comes out, but I know it goes in. Um, and then it goes through the fans, and he said that the fans are arranged asymmetrical inside the computer, and it's supposed to somehow reduce the noise. I'm not exactly sure how all the technology in it works, but uh, basically it reduces a lot of the the, uh, the fan noise. Um, and most of this, when you go to the MacBook Pro, most of the uh, the page is consumed with uh, the right in the display MacBook, and it shows off all that. But they got, um, right down here, they got the information on the, uh, the, the original MacBook Pro upgrades. Um, so they put uh, faster processors in that, uh, and I'll get more into the MacBook Pro writing display in a little bit, uh, but they put faster processors on Ivy Bridge in the MacBook Pro, uh, they have USB 3.0 in that, faster graphics, uh, and more memory, I believe you can have 16 gigabytes of memory in there now, and I believe they also said the memory was faster, um, but that is the MacBook Pro, they basically just stocked it up with all the newest technology processors and stuff like that, faster graphics, all that good stuff. They actually um, took out the 17 inch MacBook Pro, they got rid of that, they only have 13 and 15 now. Uh, but onto the MacBook Pro running display, uh, they have that uh, only in 15.4 inch, uh, they don't have it in anything else. Um, and the, the resolution of uh, the, run, the running display that is 2880 by 1800 pixels. Um, and he said that's four times the number of pixels in the previous MacBook Pro. And that is 5,184,000 pixels, which is the world's highest resolution notebook display. It gets deeper blacks, higher contrast ratios. It's 0 0.71 inches, which is, I believe, I think it's like a quarter of the MacBook Air thicker. Um, so if you take like a quarter of the MacBook Air and add it on uh, to the MacBook Air, it's about that thick. I believe he said it's not that much thicker than the MacBook Air. Um, it does not have that teardrop or whatever. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, what they call it, but it doesn't. It doesn't have that unibody that's like really thin in the front and then thicker in the back. It's just the same level throughout, but it's thinner. Um, and of course, with that thinner unibody, they got rid of the disk drive. Of course, 
they have plenty of adapters to uh, uh, fix all that because the ports on it, they have the two Thunderbolt now and they got rid of Firewire and they don't have Ethernet anymore, but they have plenty of different adapters to get that stuff. Um, it's Thunderbolt adapters they use. It's uh, about four and a half pounds. I believe they said it's under four and a half pounds. Um, actually, yeah, right here it says it. And like I said, it has flash storage. The mics, they have dual mics. The mics have been upgraded, so they sound a lot better. It has upgraded speakers in it. And that's basically most of the info I think I covered. Uh, I believe I covered all of it, but if I missed any of it, just go ahead and check it out for yourself. Um, on the Apple website, I'm sure if you're interested in it, you'll go ahead and check it out over there first. All these computers I just talked about now, if you um, buy them now, they do come with OS X Line. Uh, but Mountain Line, which they also talked about at WWDC, uh, is going to be released in a month. And if you buy your notebook now, uh, one of these new ones, it will come with Mountain Line free. And we'll get into the price of Mountain Line later on. But Mountain Line is the, uh, the next topic now, so let's go ahead and talk about that. Uh, they said it has over 200 new features. They added some applications to it, and you guys can see a lot of the features right here already. If you're upgrading from Line or Snow Leopard, it is only $20 and is available in the Mac App Store uh, coming in July. Uh, and you'll download it just like you did Lion. Um, but they added some applications. First of all, they added messages. Um, there was already a messages beta, which um, you guys can see right here I got. Uh, but that was the beta form. Uh, it's going to be finalized, of course, with Modern Lion when that is released. Uh, in July and basically this will allow you to reply to messages that are sent to your phone so if someone sends you a text message to your phone um, you can uh, reply to it using uh, messages and I'll, and I'll show you guys this is what uh, it basically looks like uh, so if someone sends me a text message to my phone using my Apple ID um, like if they're if they're iMessaging me uh, it'll go straight into this also and my phone one thing they're doing now in Modern Line is unifying Apple IDs with phone numbers so they unify my phone number with my Apple IDs. So whenever someone texts my phone or something like that, uh, it's unified with my Apple ID, so it will send it to all my devices. Uh, so to give you an example of this, if someone texts my phone number, um, it will be sent to my iPod Touch or my, uh, my Mac computer, and, I, and then I can reply to that message. But I don't know if it uses my phone number to reply or if it uses my Apple ID. Uh, but either way, you can still reply. So that's Messages Beta. They also added a Reminders app. Um, which is just reminders on your Mac computer, and they also added um, a notes app, and they also have documents in the cloud now, so that's going to be synced and all that stuff. Um, I'm not going to go very in depth in this because this video is already getting pretty long. Uh, I'll just give you the basic idea. They had a notification center to the Mac. Um, I believe they said with like a simple gesture on your trackpad, you can slide um, and open notification center. Uh, so you'll, you'll have banners and alerts, um, and there's also a do not disturb switch uh, that is also available in iOS 6 now. Um, but it's a do not disturb switch and it gets rid of the notifications so they don't keep coming in. Um, but they do have banners and alerts. Um, they also brought dictation to Mac so anywhere you can uh, type on your keyboard you can dictate the text instead. Uh, they made sharing much easier uh, with plenty of different options, uh, different sharing options. Uh, they updated Safari with the fastest JavaScript in any other browser available on the web right now. Uh, and they also unified the address bar with advanced searching. So you'll no longer have this uh, search bar over here. It'll be unified and it's more advanced, uh, the searching. Uh, as far as now as tab overviews, uh, so like if you can see here, I have multiple desktops. Like when I slide over here, there's different desktops. I have six of them actually, um, which is plenty. I don't need that many. I just have that many. Uh, but yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, I don't want to get it carried away. Um, but. Basically, you you see there's more plenty of desktops here, and I can like swipe between them and stuff. You can do that with bookmarks now on this. So they have like an overview thing. If I if I have Safari selected here, and I use my gesture to go to enter um this tab overview, I can scroll through all of them, and it's pretty much just like that. They have an offline reading list now, so you can um check out what re whatever you have saved to reading list. You can check out uh, offline without uh, internet connection, so it's kind of like Instapaper if you're if you're familiar with that. They also introduced this new feature called Power Nap, and basically when your computer's in sleep, it still fetches data and keeps everything up to date. It'll push the notifications yet uh, for for a notification center and all that different stuff. And if your computer's also in sleep and charging, um, it'll do auto backups and it'll actually fetch updates like system updates, and it'll actually install them while it's charging and in sleep. Uh, so when you open up your computer, everything's up to date, and you really never have to worry about updating anything anymore. They have AirPlay mirroring, so you can easily uh, mirror your Mac display uh, to uh, a different display or projector or something like that. Um, and they also have games that are Mac now, so it's cross you can have cross-platform gaming, so you can verse people. Uh, on your iPod Touch, you can 
play someone on their Mac or their iPhone or whatever. So that's all the features that they covered in the keynote of Mac OS X Lion. Uh, but they said there are over 200 new features. And I believe they have more of them uh, listed below here. So you can check out all of them right here, yeah. So if you want to check out any of this stuff, just go ahead and check out the Apple website. Uh, next up is iOS 6. Uh, so they first talked about Siri. Um, they updated it with uh, like sport info, so you can now uh, fetch baseball, basketball, and football information. They put more information for restaurants, like when you're searching for restaurants, uh, it displays more information about the restaurant. Reservations have also been made possible right on your device now. So if you want to reserve a table uh, for a restaurant after you finish searching, it'll launch an application. I don't remember what it's called, uh, but it'll launch the application and you can go ahead and um, reserve a table there. Uh, also, Siri gives much more information on movies and actors if you want if you want some information on actors. It's Siri's now also able to launch apps. Um, it can tweet. Uh, it can, I believe, post Facebook updates because Facebook is now also integrated into iOS 6. Um, and they're also in, and they're also making this feature called the Eyes for Easter integration. And it's not well, it's not really a feature, but uh, they've been talking to manufacturers of cars, and they're trying to get a, a button that will activate Siri in your device. Uh, into the steering wheel so you can just press a simple button uh, and just talk to Siri right through your steering wheel. Um, they said they have uh, a decent amount of manufacturers already working on it and um, they had them all listed. Um, I'm not going to talk about them all but they had them all listed. Um, and the iPad 3 and iOS 6 once that's released uh, will also have Siri now. Uh, and Siri is also now available in many more countries. Uh, like I said Facebook is uh, very integrated into iOS 6. There's plenty of things you can do with that. They have more enhancements to the phone application on the iPhone um, including like quick reply preset messages and a remind me later option so you can remind yourself uh, to call the person back so basically when someone's calling you you can um, hit remind me later to call this person back or you can go ahead and send a quick message like a preset message uh, just right to them you can just go ahead and tap tap the message and send it right to them uh, like I said they have the do not disturb switch uh, for iOS 6 like they do in Modern Line and uh, FaceTime is now also available over cellular data. So if you ever need to FaceTime over cellular data, you can. Uh, I don't know how much data they would use. I would, I'd imagine it'd probably be a good amount. Uh, I'm not positive on that, but it will be um, probably a decent amount of data. Uh, mobile Safari has uh, been upgraded to also have offline reading list. And they're also going to have iCloud tab syncing. So if you're on your Mac and um, you're opening tabs and stuff, uh, it actually syncs them with iCloud. And then you can open those same tabs right on um, your uh, your iPhone or iPad or anything else. You can also upload photos now using the mobile Safari application. Uh, there's also going to be um, landscape support for Safari. I believe they said for Safari. Uh, we'll go ahead and check it out right here. Um, uh, yeah, so you can see right here it says full screen landscape uh, and that's on the iPhone now. And I would imagine that would be in the iPod Touch as well. They have uh, more mail enhancements. I'm not going to go into all that. They have uh, something called Passbook now, and that's the brand new application. Um, it takes pretty much all your passes and tickets and everything and, and puts them all into one location so you don't have to go looking for different apps and um, or digging in your pockets or whatever for different like flight tickets and stuff. They can just scan uh, the code right on um, your device, your iPhone. Uh, so you can see right here, like they can just scan this right here and it'll just take it right into your balance. So that makes all your, um, your passes and tickets and everything uh, much easier. Maps has been updated um, a lot. It's, and it now has uh, a traffic service. It has uh, 3D support. It has uh, traffic incident reports. It has turn by turn navigation. And uh, it's just got a lot of different um, graphic UI enhancements. Um, iOS 6 also has privacy controls now. Uh, it has a lot more. Like It has to confirm that... Um, it can access your information like contacts and stuff like that and uh, there's plenty of different UI updates uh, they now updated the App Store, the iTunes Store and uh, the Music Player's uh, graphics UI they did a lot of different um, UI changes and made a lot, a lot of the stuff look better uh, the App Store and iTunes Store are both like darker and so is the uh, the Music Player uh, and one thing they changed is like when you're in the settings application uh, the status bar rather than being like white it's now blue and stuff like that. So some of the applications are kind of like more, uh, the status bar has just changed, like depending on what application you're in. Um, but that's basically it. It's pretty much everything um, that was covered at WWDC. Uh, again, if you guys want some more information and along with the pictures and stuff, you can check out the website. Um, 
Apple's website and you can see all of the detailed the detailed information uh, along with pricing and everything for like the Macs and stuff like that. Uh, but that's it for this video. I hope it wasn't too boring with all that specification talk and all that hardware stuff. Um, uh, but that's it. If you guys enjoyed it, go ahead and like it down below. I appreciate that. You can also subscribe to Top Notify when I release my new videos. I'll be keeping you guys up to date with the jailbreak information for like iOS 6 and stuff like that. Uh, and I also have more tech videos to come. I'll probably be doing like a walkthrough of iOS 6 or showing off some of the features um, in my future videos. Also, if you guys want access to iOS 6 uh, Beta 1, the only beta they have out right now is Beta 1. Uh, but if you want access to iOS 6 Beta, you just have to get your UDID registered of your Apple device um, with a developer account. So you can either uh, pay someone to register um, your UDID with their uh, Apple account, or you can actually get your own Apple account for 100 bucks a year. Uh, but normally they only charge about like five bucks to get your UDID registered, uh, and that'll allow you to uh, restore to iOS 6. Uh, but that is it. You guys can also follow me on Twitter uh, for tech updates over there. My Twitter username is the same as my YouTube username. I dig every week. And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video.